Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In today's episode, I want to share with you a video that's being circulated on Telegram, which is the most widely used social media app in Russia. It's basically the WhatsApp equivalent in Russia. And this video shows what will happen if a nuclear weapon is detonated over central London. Now, clearly, the timing of the release of this video is really quite interesting because there is so much going on right now with regards to what's happening in Ukraine. Ukraine is currently requesting that the UK and the USA and other countries allow it to use long-range weapons to be able to strike deep into the heart of Russia. And Russia has said that if that is allowed, then those countries will be deemed to be joining in the war by Russia and they'll take appropriate action. And also, we've got rising tensions in the Middle East right now. Israel has launched multiple attacks on Hezbollah in Lebanon, and that's raising tension, particularly in Iran, who are supporters of Hezbollah, and they are threatening to join that fight. And if they do, there is a serious risk that the USA could be drawn in on the side of Israel. So there are rising tensions right now in terms of the potential threat of some sort of nuclear strike. So let's have a look at the video, and then after this, I'll summarize what I think is going on right now and why this video has been released. Imagine for a moment that the unimaginable happens. A nuclear weapon explodes over London. In this documentary, we explore the devastating consequences of this catastrophe. In the simulation, we will use a warhead with a yield of 750 kilotons. That's a pretty powerful charge. Some US and Russian ballistic missiles are capable of carrying up to 10 charges in a single missile. Upon detonation, a fireball as hot as the sun rapidly expands, reaching a radius of 950 meters. Anything trapped inside this fireball is instantly vaporized. In our simulation, the epicenter of the explosion is at Westminster. People within that radius won't even feel anything because the nerve impulse transmission speed is slower. Within five kilometers of the epicenter, the blast radius, city of London, Camden Town, Kensington, Brixton. These areas will receive the most destruction. Buildings will be destroyed and debris will fill the streets, creating extremely dangerous conditions for everyone in the vicinity. Given the population density in central London, the initial death toll could exceed 250,000 people and around 600,000 injured. Within a radius of 10 kilometers, the radiation will cause third-degree burns. Within that radius, anything that can burn will catch fire. Gas stations, automobiles, power substations, gas infrastructure. Explosive facilities will explode and amplify the effect of the devastation over a huge area, including areas from Camden to Greenwich and Islington to Wandsworth. According to various estimates, further 450,000 people will die from burns, debris injuries, or radiation sickness, and over a million will be traumatized. Many of these injuries could prove fatal over the next days and weeks. Radiation sickness in particular will take lives days and weeks later. In time, about 100,000 more will be added to the death toll. Within an 18-kilometer radius of the blast, the shock wave will be enough to shatter windows, causing additional casualties to people who come to the windows when they see the nuclear blast. The shock wave will reach Hounslow, Edgware, and Enfield. Depending on the wind, the fallout could spread well beyond the immediate blast zone, potentially affecting areas up to 5 to 10 kilometers away, causing damage even in regions such as Essex or Surrey. The estimated casualties in the event of a 750 kiloton nuclear bomb exploding in London would be about 850,000 people dead and about 2 million injured. If the explosion were to occur on the ground rather than in the air, the fallout map would be greatly expanded and the radioactive fallout could even reach Manchester, infecting people, land and animals. The problem with a nuclear explosion in London is also that London is essentially not designed to survive such a disaster. Eleven of London's 20 major hospitals would be within the blast. The remaining hospitals would be physically unable to cope with the number of victims. Many people are still alive under the rubble of the buildings, suffering burns, but 
no one will be able to help them. So not surprisingly, that's a pretty depressing tale of events. If a nuclear weapon does explode over central London, hundreds of thousands of people, potentially millions of people, will lose their lives. And obviously, the UK is a nuclear force. It has nuclear weapons of its own. So if a strike did take place over central London, it is virtually guaranteed that the UK would strike back. And it's not stated in that video who's actually launched that missile. There's a reference saying that both the USA, they're named first, and Russia have warheads of that size. But clearly, in terms of where this video is being posted and circulated, there is a strong inference that it could be coming from Russia. And in fact, why would the USA be detonating a nuclear weapon over London? Because they have been very long-term allies and they've joined forces. They're in NATO together. It's extremely unlikely that the USA would ever detonate a nuclear bomb over London. The most likely option is that it's coming from Russia. And clearly, there is an undercurrent here. There's an undertone that says, basically, everybody should be worried because Russia has nuclear weapons and it can strike London and various other countries around the world. And really, I think what the message here is, is that everybody should stay out of the war in Ukraine. That's certainly the message that's been coming from the Kremlin over the course of the past few months, particularly as Ukraine has ramped up its efforts in terms of striking back with drones. I've talked about this on the channel before, but Ukraine is now launching hundreds of drones on a daily basis, targeting Russian infrastructure, such as oil and gas facilities. And the European Union and the USA have both committed to encouraging Russia and helping them in that effort, helping them build over a million drones in 2024, and potentially could be up to 3 million drones in 2025. So the war has taken a turn in terms of Russia is now having to defend itself. Ukraine also recently took over some ground in the Kursk region, around 500 square miles. So I think what we're seeing here is Russian propaganda starting to permeate through social media and sending these scaremongering stories saying, watch out, there is a real risk here that Russia could strike places like London and if they do, a million or two million people could be killed within a matter of days. And I think this really is a bigger picture political issue. And it will be fascinating to see what happens over the course of the next three months. Firstly, whether or not the USA agrees to allow Ukraine to use their long range missiles. Joe Biden has been reluctant to sign off on that. And my guess is that he's unlikely to do that before he leaves office. And so the incoming president will have to make that call. And I guess it will depend on whether it's Kamala Harris or Donald Trump. And if the decision is taken to allow Ukraine to use long range missiles, then that really could change the face of the war in Ukraine. It could draw in those other countries into a wider dispute with Russia. And I guess we may be seeing a lot more videos like this over the course of the next three months. We may well see a similar simulation of what would happen if a nuclear weapon hit New York or Washington or LA or something like that. But we'll have to wait and see. But I wanted to share this video with you because I think it's really important to keep everybody in the loop, to hear what's going on on social media, the sort of messages that are now being spread. Because I think over the course of the next few months, as we go into the US presidential election and beyond and have a new president, that there's going to be a lot of messages like this threatening the USA, the UK and the rest of Europe against getting involved in that war. And also, as I mentioned at the start of today's video, events in the Middle East are really starting to ramp up at the moment. And there's also a risk that the USA could be drawn into whatever happens with Israel. If it gets involved in a fight with Iran, then the USA could get drawn into that. And there is always a risk that Russia will then team up with Iran and we could see events starting to escalate. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's video, you found it useful, informative and particularly thought provoking today, slightly different to my usual format. If you did, then please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this slightly shorter than usual video all the way through to the end. And here's something to put a smile on your face.